Welcome to my kitchen. This video has been requested once, literally once. I'm very easily swayed. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know my tiles, but today you'll get to see the rest. I hope this won't disappoint. I'm starting out by the door. The dove wallpaper you can see is actually my bedroom. First of all, let's take a quick 360 degree view and then get into the details. There's a lot of stepping back and forth because the room is quite long and narrow. So to show everything, I'm gonna do quite a few three-point turns. And we're back at the entrance, so I'm going to show you what's what on the shelves. On the right, as I come in, I'm stashing things that are pretty, but that I don't need to get to every day. On the hook by the door, a speaker, so I can listen to audiobooks while cooking. Top shelf, left to right, I've got a big box of tea. Some La Durée cookbooks from my Paris-obsessed phase. The books are called Sucre, Macarons and Tea Time. Let's see what I marked with a postcard there. That must have been quite some time ago. I have no idea what that was. Cinnamon hazelnut shortbread. I might veganize that at some point because that sounds delightful. More teas, among them one called Tsarevna, which is magical. Also, I have an old bottle of champagne sitting on that shelf. Uh, if I remember the story correctly, my dad bought the bottle for my mom on their anniversary. But that was the night my mom told my dad that she was pregnant with me, and they never ended up drinking it. <laughs> also up there is a coffee pot and a mirror. The mirror just because it's a pretty dark corner and the mirror helps light it up a little. And yeah, I dropped it once the glass broke and I haven't gotten around to fixing it yet. On the shelf below is my sauerkraut pot because, well, I'm German, did you actually expect me not to have a sauerkraut pot? <laughs> then a few jugs and another coffee pot. And two teapots. Most of the nice china I have is inherited from my grandmother who was a bit of a collector. And in recent years I've learned to properly appreciate it as well. In the corner is my herb drying rack, which I filmed myself making, and let's see what I have on there right now. On the top tier are cornflower petals for my tea mixers, and the lower two tiers are both sweet woodruff from the garden. On the next shelf is a cake stand that I've never actually used for cake. <laughs> it holds a couple of jars of assorted beans, garlic bulbs, some lemons that dried out, not on purpose, but now I kind of like the look so they can stay. <laughs> and some essences and infusions I've made. Lavender and peppermint essences and some nasturtium vinegar. Then some avant-garde floral arrangement in the shape of grasses and sticks in a can. Um, some lights are taped to the underside of the shelf, again because the corner is quite dark. Uh, try to ignore my finger on the camera, I'm, I'm really sorry about that. Then there's a bottle of wine and a glass and decanter that I bought when I was in Venice with a friend of mine, and behind that is one of my embroideries. It's based on Peter Behrens' The Kiss, worked in split stitch and couch Japanese gold thread, if you're curious. <laughs> Next to that, a stack of cookbooks, Venetian cuisine, Viennese, Japanese. I'm just now noticing this stack is very um, access power heavy, but <laughs> I, I, I promise I own cookbooks from places that didn't go fash. For the full effect, I'm gonna light the candles for a minute. Moving along, a picture of some mountains that used to hang in my grandmother's house. This door leads to the bathroom, which I won't be showing you. 
I'm using the door as kind of a notice board and for the purposes of this video I've covered all the personal info with stunt notes. Another art print, this time of some trees. And we've reached the working part of the kitchen. Up on the wall I've got more inheritance things, Spätzle maker, Kugelhupf tins, and even my grand aunt's pot holders are up there. Here I have my nice kitchen towels. These are mostly decorative. I think they are just too pretty to use. My sink, a basket for the recycling on the floor, and the kitchen towels I actually use. Below the sink is, as in every house, are the cleaning products. Over here, the hob, another dark corner, which is why I filled it with a lot of white things. In the middle are my three large drawers. The top one serves as kind of a pantry, Below that are bowls, sieves, small machines and gadgets. And in the bottom drawer, stacks of pots, pans and baking dishes. On the oven, another tea towel. I'm starting to think I have a bit of an obsession with tea towels. And in the drawer below the oven, I have my baking tins. My baking tins. I actually bought one of those. The other ones are all inherited or hand-me-downs, as most things in my kitchen. I'm under the roof, so I also have a couple of pretty funky angles happening, but I hope this print of some bugs distracts from that. All the way back in the corner I have a little nook with some more dishes, kitchen machine, juicer and the fridge. In the fridge door I'm keeping bottles of the syrups I've made for videos just to check longevity and how they keep their color. So far, it's all looking pretty good. We've reached the far side of the room. Leaning against the wall is a board I use for making strudel or cinnamon rolls. My parents bought that one when they moved in together. In front of that, I have a serving tray for when I have lunch in the living room and a cutting board. The big bottle of soda is elderflower lemonade, which is sold at the Romanian shop around the corner. It's an absolute revelation. Then there's my knife block, uh, some more kitchen towels, <laughs> and a chair for sitting on. And there is my only window, which I love and cherish. I also film in this corner by natural light, which on cloudy days is really obvious in my videos. In the corner are a couple of jars of pigment, some apple scrub vinegar, and a jar for collecting coffee grounds for the garden. And the book I'm currently reading. This is how I usually have my morning coffee sitting on a bar stool, reading my book, and depending on how early I wake up, watching the sunrise outside the window. Currently reading Judith Flanders' The Invention of Murder. If you're into Sherlock Holmes, this should be really interesting to you. It's about Victorian murder and the beginnings of organized police force. As I'm reviewing the footage, I'm, I'm noticing the flowers have died, and I hadn't seen that, so let's fix that real quick. The cutting board that you'll be familiar with, if this is not your first video of mine you're watching. I baked an apple cake yesterday because I had coffee and cake with my mother. All within the rules of social distancing, of course. A fruit bowl and a basket of assorted vegetables. Blender and my spice rack. Here I have vanilla, some vinegar. That's plantain essence, I believe. Um, molasses and vanilla essence. On the rack behind it, cutlery, also mostly hand-me-downs, spatulas and stirrers. I won't go through each jar I have on the spice rack, but I want to point out my little hedgehog, which is intended to be a honeypot, I believe, but I use it to keep my non-metal spoons. 
All the way in the corner is my thermos. And the blue thing in the corner used to hold cookies when I bought it, but now stores my reusable baking sheets. On the shelf above it is an old bread box. I use it to protect my garden-grown tea ingredients. I've got rose petals, lavender, dandelion petals, candied roses, dandelion root, chamomile, dandelion leaves. In this house we use all the parts of the dandelion. Some pumpkin seeds from the pumpkin I grew this year, more lavender, and um, wait, no, that's lavender, the other one was violets. And finally, violet sugar. Uh, I made videos of a bunch of things you can see in this video, and I'll link those below if I remember. Moving right along, you can see a coffee grinder and the green metal box is where I keep my coffee beans. Two ceramic coffee filters, and leaning against the wall, a blue and gold framed tile that used to hang on my grandmother's wall, and a bread cutting board that my dad made. And one of my very favorite things I own, an old mechanic scale. It also used to be at my grandmother's, and it still works. But to be honest, it's quite fiddly, so I don't use it very much. Or at all, really. Another coffee pot and a sugar pot that was a present from my mother. Next to that, a coffee and sugar jar that used to stand in the garden shed of my grandmother's on my mother's side. And yet more china from the collection of my grandmother on my father's side. My grandmothers in life didn't particularly like each other, so I like the idea that they're finally united side by side on my shelf. On the top shelf, a metal container where I keep tea lights, also from my grandmother. Actually, I'm gonna stop pointing out all the things that I've inherited. <laughs> if it's pretty, you can assume it belonged to somebody else first. Next to that, more pantry things. The first group is mainly from the garden. First, some wild carrot seeds. They look really pretty in the jar. <laughs> Mint, carrot seed, sage, orange rind behind them, and a big jar of stinging nettle seeds. In the blue metal is strawberry leaf tea and sweet woodruff. Also, rosemary, rose hips, and a big jar of sea salt, which was not harvested in my garden. Sea salt, oats, cacao nibs, dry yeast, sesame, seaweed, flaxseed, buckwheat, lentils, chickpeas, black beans, walnuts, herbs and spice mixes, some dill and mustard seeds I use for making pickles, some herbs and some polenta. A couple of bottles of oil and tomato sauce I keep in a metal box in case of spillage, and a couple more cookbooks. Let's pull back for a second and give, give you a complete picture. I love this wall, I'm not gonna lie. It's just, it just makes me wanna cook. In the cabinet, I keep my travel mugs, French press, and a stack of little bowls I use in my videos. And a whole collection of artificial sweeteners. Behind that, cornflakes, soy sauce, sweet chili sauce, basically all the things that are too tall to keep elsewhere. Below that, more bowls and a lot of jars of things I made. Jams, syrups, on the right are two jars of quince chutney. On the bottom shelf, I keep flour and sugar and assorted pieces of china that come in handy on occasion, but that I don't reach for daily. Oh, and two bags of seaweed pasta that I bought because it sounds real healthy, but I realized my digestion does not enjoy that much seaweed at a time. Then I've got six smaller drawers and next to that open shelving for plates, glasses and cups respectively. And on the bottom shelf, serving platters of various shapes and sizes. These drawers are really handy and I've sorted them by theme. So on the top one I've got stationery on the left and flower arranging supplies on the right. The second drawer is small kitchen items like strainers, spice bags, dough scrapers and so on. Some tops for fermenting and in the corner, my fermentation weights. Below that is a medicinal drawer, holds vitamins, aspirin, some embroidered handkerchiefs that are decorative and too pretty to use, which is why I have tissues. <laughs> in these little drawers, I prepare my supplements for the week. Next up, in the household repairs drawer, light bulbs, batteries, tape and a hammer. This drawer is mostly napkins and rolls of baking sheet, tin foil, coffee filters, candles and loads of paper napkins. 
I, I don't actually buy them all that often, I just don't use many. So while I buy maybe two packs a year, I have developed quite a collection. Uh, also a couple of linen napkins. I just saw that stain there and it's really annoying and I have to remember to wash that. Uh, this is also where I keep cloth and mesh squares to put on my fermentation. And a tablecloth I use to roll apple strudel. The bottom drawer is themed sin. A couple of bottles of alcohol and some doilies. If you don't know why doilies fall under the category of sin, you have not lived. Okay, I think I've shown you everything now and I'm sitting on the floor of my kitchen staring at the tiles, which does not make for a good ending to the video. Wait, okay, this is much nicer. Let me just get the soaking chickpeas out of the way. That's a nice final shot for the video. Alright, um, that's all from me. I hope I made this trip through the land of tea towels at least a little bit enjoyable. Thank you so much for joining me. And if you enjoyed this video, why not subscribe?